Ukraine has passed a new education law, and we have with us Igor Samohin, uh, who is the education policy expert from CETO Think Tank, uh, and uh, he's with us to explain both the what changes and concerns offer the effect of this uh, reform on the minority. So, Igor, uh, just before we start, um, I have to explain that by many accounts, the reform has much to offer, higher salaries for teachers, more local control of schools and curriculum improvements. It was also developed uh, with the active participation of civil society and incorporates input from the public. But one aspect of the law is causing controversy, language. The bill would require all students to study in the Ukrainian language after the fourth grade and would eliminate minority language schools. That's how it's said. This has sparked conflict with some of the neighboring countries who are concerned for their co-ethnics in Ukraine. Uh, it also has provoked debates with Ukraine among teachers, parents and even students. Students, That is all in, uh, in our program. But first of all, explain us why, what is this law about? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh the law of on education is the new, uh, the main law on education in Ukraine, which covers all uh, levels of education, starting from primary and uh, to higher education. Uh, it is not the only law that uh, uh, re regulates education in Ukraine, but uh, it is What's like new there? The, the What's most... What's new? Yeah, uh, uh, the new things are... Uh, more control uh, to the localities, more uh, autonomy for schools, more autonomy for teachers, more possibilities for teachers to improve their curricula, to improve uh, their own education, uh, less control over schools from uh, uh, local uh, government and more uh, governing body bodies which consist of parents and uh, other persons in uh, uh, localities who uh, who are stakeholders in these schools. What was the role of the civil society in uh, creating it? Yes. Uh, I think that would probably the reason why there was no really, th there was this kind of huge support with, of this law uh, by Ukrainians despite the language issue. Yes, uh, there was a big support in uh, media, in social media, and it was seen as a uh, uh, landmark reform for education in Ukraine because uh, many uh, NGOs, including our NGO, Status Think Tank, uh, took part in uh, 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 advising government on writing this law, in promoting uh, specific uh, articles of this law, on promoting specific progressive reforms uh, that uh, are uh, contained in this law. So. Uh, uh, this law, is more than many others, is uh, based on civil society. Uh. Yes, yeah, so with that, we also uh, spoke to Oksana Makarenko, an advisor to the Minister of Education and Science, and she explained uh, what the goals of the education reform, uh, how they are addressed, and also answered on the concern regarding the language, which would be the part of this discussion later. Ukraine is not the only country currently undergoing the crisis of educational systems. The whole world is now looking for ways to reform and renovate education. Since we have new technologies, new values, new requirements by employers in the market. The old Ukrainian education system does not help children become successful in today's world. Besides this, our education system, especially in the middle classes, has not had any reforms for over a century. The same teaching methods have been used for decades. The teacher's role has changed today. It is no longer just to transfer knowledge from books to kids, but to form the core knowledge so that a child will be able to use it in different life situations in the future. And this law includes mechanisms that makes this possible. Qualification agencies, and their role is to gather job requirements from the market and convert them into educational standards. Children can become innovators only if the surroundings allow them to make mistakes. Surroundings where kids can experiment, do research, make hypotheses, and then prove or disprove them, and where they have tools for that, including a developed intuition. It's important for us to start treating teachers differently and to change their motivation to allow their creativity to flow. And this system allows that, up to the point that teachers are allowed to pick which books they want to use in teaching, 
and how long to dedicate to each subject. We are not deluded with regards to the time period this reform will take. That's why we've stretched it over 10 years. It will be put into action from 2018 onwards, so the first primary school kids to experience it will probably be those graduated in the year 2029-2030. One of the most discussed aspects of the reform is that it implies that the languages of minorities can now only be used to teach kids in grades 1 through 4. What grounds did you have for this particular decision and what will happen to the minority languages after fourth grade? This is, of course, a political question that got a little painful. We have an objective situation with Ukrainian, our national language, needing protection. For example, 70% of kids who graduated from minority language schools in, Ber in Beregovo in Zakarpatia get around 1 to 3 out of 12 points in their Ukrainian language admission exam. This shows that Ukrainian citizens graduated from minority language schools virtually don't know the national language. In result, they have limited choice of universities to go to because most universities teach in Ukrainian and they cannot work at most state positions in the future. This law stays within the framework of the Constitution of Ukraine that guarantees ethnic minorities the right to study their native language. It also doesn't violate the document on regional languages that was implemented by the European Union and ratified by Ukraine. But at the same time, it helps Ukrainian language spread in schools. Is the Ministry of Education prepared for the protests of Russian and Hungarian speakers in the south and east of Ukraine and the Zakarpatya region? Because as far as I remember, the statistics say that around 200,000 students study in Russian, so this can anger parents. Is there a mechanism for dealing with this? I know that there are parents who don't know Ukrainian themselves, and they are worried that they won't be able to help their children with homework, and that's why they chose the Russian language schools for their kids. And there are those who, on the contrary, demand for more Ukrainian language to be taught in school, despite the fact that they can't speak it themselves, and they just want their children to know the national language. There are many such parents in the south and east of Ukraine. Yes, it's being perceived as a painful problematic question, but I think that people have accepted it, and now they try to see what they need to do next rather than just protest. So as far we can um, explain that uh, it was highly supported by the civil society due some kind of the positive changes and probably that was m maybe the part why there was not much criticism inside of Ukraine for this law. So can you elaborate a bit on more and how comes then this language issue had appeared? Yes, uh, so the law overall is very, uh, has a huge support in Ukraine. Of course, there is also a controversial issue of 12-year school, which is not supported by many parents in Ukraine because they believe that the children uh, do not have to spend uh, that many years in school. But it is uh, uh, by experts and by European governments, it is generally considered that 12 years is a bet uh, better time frame to uh, cover all that is needed to be covered in the school and that the children can be more adult and more grown up when they finish the school. So it is partly controversial in Ukraine. But overall, the thing that I, I thought about, uh, more auto autonomy, more local control, more parents' control, and so on, these things, and also higher, teachers, higher uh, salaries for teachers, which are uh, to be minimum uh, three minimal, uh, minimum, uh, minimum Ukrainian uh, salaries. So it's like uh, the, even the teacher uh, who just begins to teach, uh, he will have uh, three times more uh, bigger salary than the unskilled worker. Uh, and the teachers were always underpaid in Ukraine, so of course yes. there is the support uh, of that particular policy, but my colleagues uh, from Ramatske also went to the schools, and especially to the Russian language schools. Uh, that is where there is a lot of interest, and talk to the students and parents. S some of them believe the reform we will cause the prog problem. But others believe the change is doable and even important. Starting next year, Ukraine will implement a new education reform that will change how teachers teach and students study. 
Many aspects of the reform are fairly uncontroversial, but one is provoking controversy on an international level. According to the reform, minority languages can only be used to teach until the fourth grade. In practice, this means there will no longer be separate schools where the primary language of instruction is anything other than Ukrainian. Instead, minority language schools must transition to a new program. Tatiana Fedunova, director of Kiev Russian Language School No. 85, says that such a transition will prove difficult for her students. This school has been teaching in Russian throughout the entire history. Russian language has been used since the school was founded in 1956. Our students are of more than 30 nationalities and backgrounds, foreigners, children of diplomats whose professional interests lie in Kiev, and we also all communicate in Russian here. Supporters of the reform say that it will help students prepare for the Ukrainian language component of the compulsory university entrance exam. In their opinion, this exam is always a challenge for students who studied in languages other than Ukrainian. But Fedunova doesn't agree and says this has never been an issue before. I'm very proud of how well our children performed on their entrance examinations. First of all, they all choose to do their exams in the Ukrainian language as opposed to Russian. And for a school with Russian as a medium of instruction, that's a great result. Absolutely all of them passed their exams in Ukrainian with flying colors. But Anna Boyko, the director of another Russian language school, says that teachers will be happy to switch to Ukrainian. I will not have any problems with starting to teach in Ukrainian. This is not our biggest worry at the moment. Ukrainian language has been taught here, the children all know it, we follow Ukrainian traditions, holidays and events are all held in Ukrainian. It seems like the biggest naysayers of this new education reform are parents. They say they want their children to graduate from a Russian language school and say they have legitimate reasons. Ukraine is particularly located in the center of Europe, connecting Europe's east and west. We carry both eastern and western cultures, and it's great when we can speak the language of our neighbor. I think knowing Russian for the sake of just speaking is not enough. Children need to know the grammar and be able to write well. A Russian school gives children an equal amount of language skills in Ukrainian and Russian. In my opinion, if we consider the country an aggressor, then completely different measures should be applied. It's unreasonable to apply the same rule to the language. If there is a war with yes tomorrow, would that mean that we need to stop learning English? Many people I've talked with say they want to move to a different country with their children. And trust me, these people are not stupid. They have university degrees. This reform will prove to be a bad decision for Ukraine. Despite the parents' criticism, the children themselves seem ready to switch to Ukrainian. They acknowledge there are difficulties, but they also believe that this is a necessary step. Our language of instruction was Russian, so it will be hard for us to switch to Ukrainian, especially because some scientific subjects have very specific terms. But we need to do this because we live and study in Ukraine, and we will work here in the future too. So here, can you explain, so if that uh, law uh, had been widely discussed among the civil society, in particular all, everything connected to education, not the language, uh, there was not much discussion about the language or were any like eth different communities consulted? What, can, w what should people know about that? Yeah, uh, the thing is that uh, the education law, it went through two readings in the RADA before it was approved by the RADA and not only it, it, it can be a false impression that it was written by NGOs and totally approved by NGOs in all its parts. It was uh, partly rewritten and uh, amended by politicians and I think that uh, language issue, it, uh, uh, it's, its roots in the uh, politicians of Ukraine because uh, there is the uh, coalition uh, in the Ukrainian Rada. It is strongly pro-Ukrainian language, and uh, it was expected that they would, uh, like, pro would amend this uh, law in a more uh, controversial way. And uh, I would like to bring the quotes from the Romanian prime minister, who even had cancelled his visit to. Ukraine, as well as the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Hungary. That's what they've said. We urge the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights to start an investigation in connection with the law adopted in Ukraine and to use all means to stop violations of minority rights by this new law. 
When we learned of this law, I canceled my visit to Ukraine, and I also came out against the visit by the Speaker of the Ukrainian Parliament, scheduled for the end of September, in order to send a strong diplomatic signal. Canceling a presidential visit is an extremely powerful signal. I told him directly that this visit will not happen until progress is made on the education law. And uh, now, uh, please watch the answer of the Ukrainian uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. We've asked this question. First of all, the critics are speaking with regard to the interpretation, but not with regard to the law itself. I discussed with Lilia Grinevich all the details of this law thoroughly, and most importantly, its realization. What we propose is just the preservation of education in the languages of minorities. That's, first of all, an international duty, but it's something we need to do. But we also need to make sure that our citizens know Ukrainian to a decent standard so that they have the future in Ukraine so that they could attend our universities and have jobs. I think I've said in an interview before that I visited the Hungarian consulate once where I went downstairs and greeted everyone. Some people smiled at me and couldn't say anything back because they didn't know Ukrainian, hence why I spoke with all the ministers, had discussions. We want to add education in Ukrainian and not take away education in minority languages, and we are going to directly do that. Additionally, we are also going to talk with our Romanian and Hungarian partners. Now there are questions from the Bulgarians and others. Even the Hungarians have written a statement saying that now the Hungarian university in Ukraine will close. We're all laughing because nobody's going to close anything. Or there won't be any more education in schools. I say, how's that possible? You have the possibility to study biology in Hungarian, but you should know the terminology in Ukrainian to have a future in Ukraine. I think that our discussion will lead to understanding, but everybody has internal politics. Somebody tries to communicate, somebody tries to use internal politics. We will continue to work on it. The question is very important. Every citizen of Ukraine must know Ukrainian. So this graph explains uh, what we have, uh, how many people it affects. We can say that 400,000 children from national minorities use their native language as medium of instruction today. Ukraine language as the subject is taught uh, for two hours per week. In a lot of uh, cases, what else we should probably mention? Uh, yes, that the... Uh uh, two hours per week is a very small amount of time and it is not enough for a, a profound uh, knowledge of the language and to, of uh, ability to speak in it and to use it in a, a society. I'll ask to bring the, another graph which also shows uh, the, which communities its effect. We can speak about the uh, people, uh, these are the, you, you, we can have the bit more than 2,000 students studying in the Moldovan language, then later Polish. Uh, the, the, of course, the largest community is 300,000 people students studying in the Russian languages. Uh, then, of course, Romanian and Hungarian is up to 16,000 people. Uh, but really, Igor, uh, there is a question that it's uh, really, you know, out of, instead of the multi-ethnic multi country, some kind of, we are building the, multi, the, you, the, the country with, the, you know, one um, ethnic group of Ukrainians. So what would be your answer on that? And I also ask to bring the, the other chart. Yes, uh, I would not say that it, is, uh, it will be a monolingual country uh, that only Ukrainian will be used because uh, the issue in this law is uh, uh, to make Ukrainian language more, uh, more taught and uh, to provide for these children to uh, uh, know Ukrainian language better before they enter uh, like uh, workforce or university. Because uh, currently, if people uh, who, children who study uh, in their uh, native language uh, and they uh, study Ukrainian just two hours per week, they cannot uh, basically enter university because university is uh, uh, in Ukrainian official language. So uh, what will happen? That's what we understand. And this is the graph which is provided by Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine that children from national minorities can obtain education in their native language in preschool. And as in well, they can, there is a possibility to study several subjects in native language uh, but still it's kind of the choice of the state not of the people uh, yes and no because 
Uh, of course, people, uh, everybody would like to uh, be taught in their native language and because it is easier, it is more convenient. But for the state, the issue is that uh, these children, they are not able to enter the Ukrainian society fully, fully integrated in it. So, uh, as I see this reform, is, it is an attempt to uh, provide for better integration of uh, national minorities in Ukrainian society, but without assimilation because they will study their language, they will study in their language bef uh, before 10 years, so uh, they will not forget their language or something like that. So I would, I would not say that it is uh, like total assimilation. Uh, Igor, thanks a lot. Uh, Igor uh, Samohin is the analyst for education policy at CETO Think Tank, but we promise to you that we will, we will uh, follow this topic and we are about to um, invite uh, the representative of the ministry, the representative or who are opposing this law and also talk to some of the communities. So we are with this topic and thanks a lot for being with us. Uh, and I urge you to go to our webpage en.romatske.ua and there you can see the full version of our uh, programs, of our shows uh, and the interviews and you can also also uh, go to the social networks and uh, to the social networks, uh, search Hromatsky International at Facebook and Twitter. Uh, that uh, what we would like to, uh, to give you and I'll be back in a second. Mm -hmm.